You know, the International Hockey League of the 1990s, early 2000s means a lot to a lot of people. We're getting a lot of requests on the channel about the league itself and its member teams. Now, most recent requests uh, from a new follower of the channel, AJ Raider. AJ, thanks for the request. He wanted me to do something on the Detroit Vipers. Well, the Detroit Vipers are a very unique situation. I covered the Vipers for a couple of years back in the day because my good friend Gordy Dwyer, who was in the Tampa Bay Lightning system at the time, played for the Vipers for part of uh, two seasons. Now, the Viper, Vipers themselves were an international hockey league team founded in 1944 and played at the Palace of Auburn Hills. A very interesting history, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, their mascot was not a snake, it was a bear called the Vipe Bear. Now, it was named after a car, but yet not. We'll get into that in a second. Now, it played at the Palace of Auburn Hills, great location, of course. Very unique colors, green, white, red, black, eggplant, and aqua. Now, affiliated with uh, Tampa Bay for a while and Ottawa as well, they were originally the Salt Lake uh, City Golden Eagles. Now, the Salt Lake was formed in 1969. In 94, the franchise, or uh, the team itself, was purchased by Palace Sports and Entertainment, which owned the Pistons and the, the Palace as well. They relocated for the 95 season. A sponsorship deal with the Chrysler Corporation led to the uh, naming of the team after their Dodge Viper. Although the team's logo primarily featured a common Viper Day, which was, of course, a venomous snake. A similar deal was in place with another Palace Sports owned team, the Detroit Neon of the Continental Indoor Soccer League, which switched its sponsorship to GMC in its final year and renamed the squad the Detroit Safari after yet another vehicle, of course, the Safari. Now, the team hired former Buffalo Sabres coach and former NHLer with the Sabres Rick Dudley as their main man. Their first season was during the NHL lockout, and this combined with a liberal amount of free ticket vouchers distributed at local stores helped the Vipers break IHL attendance records that season with nearly 17,000 uh, per game on average. Now, according to reports from WDIV at the time, you could get the free tickets uh, at local stores and outlets, uh, either gas stations or convenience stores or small convenience stores. And uh, at the time, their concessions were quite large too. So getting 17,000 fans per game were making a lot of money off concessions. I think the majority of tickets at the time would be valued in a $12 range. If somebody wants to back me up on that, let me know. Now, on December 1st, they made NHL history when the Vipers took on the 99s, an all-star team of locked-out NHL players led by Wayne Gretzky. The Vipers won this game 4-3, and future NHL star Miroslav Shatan, or Satan, depending on how you want to pronounce it, scored a winning goal for the Vipers. Now, three Red Wing players, Steve Eisenman, Sergei Fedorov, and Paul Coffey did not appear in this game. Led by a franchise record 44 goals by Daniel Shank, the Vipers won the IHL Central Division, but were eliminated by the KC Blades in five games in the first round of the postseason. Now, the 96th season saw the notable signing of Washington Capitals phenom Peter Bondra for a brief time while he was locked in a holdout with Washington management, as well as the departure of Rick Dudley to take the GM position with the Senators. He was replaced uh, behind the bench by A.C. Steve Ludzik for the final 32 games. The Vipers finished the season in second place in the Central and led the league in attendance yet again. In the first round of the playoffs, they defeated the Indianapolis Ice in five games, but the Vipers lost their second round playoff series to the Orlando Soro Bears in seven contests. Now, 97 saw the arrival of 17-year-old Russian phenom Sergei Sansmanov and IHL All-Star Stan Drulia to the Vipers. Uh, Drulia led the team in scoring, and Samsonov would win Rookie of the Year honors as the Vipers won another division title. Detroit would advance to their first Turner Cup final against the Long Beach Ice Dogs. Led by Samsonov and Peter Savaglia, the Vipers won the series four games to two for the first ever Turner Cup. The championship allowed the city of Detroit to be the first city to capture two cups in the same season as the Detroit Red Wings won the Stanley Cup. Now, Samsonov would eventually become a high first-round draft pick of the Bruins, but the slack was picked up in 98 by 40 goals from Dan Kessa as the Vipers won their third division title in four campaigns. 
They would advance to the Turner Cup Finals against the Chicago Wolves, but after going up three games to two, would only be able to score one goal in their final two games and lost in seven contests. 98 uh, also saw a one-shift comeback from Gordie Howe, making him the only person to play hockey in six different decades as a pro. Now, the tape, uh, tape of his performance is out there, and it shows in his last shift, he's moving the elbow up to try to hit somebody. Quite interesting. He knew he was playing in Detroit. Now, the 98 season saw another division title for the Vipers, and it became the first team in pro hockey to have 100 points in the standings in each of their first five years. However, they were defeated in the Eastern Conference Finals by the Solar Bears in seven games after a questionable call by referee Matt Pilgrim. In 99, Palace Sports and Entertainment purchased the Lightning and made the Vipers their top farm club. Vipers coach Steve Ludzik was moved to Tampa Bay as part of the Palace's efforts to rebuild the struggling NHL team. The great Paul and Bordolo took over as Vipers coach. Now, this is where it gets bizarre, ladies and gentlemen. The Vipers' woes were nothing, however, compared to the worsening health of the IHL. The league had overexpanded itself throughout the decade and was paying the price in red ink. Additionally, strange relations with the NHL cost a number of IHL teams or NHL affiliations, and with it, their noted subsidized salaries. By the start of the 2001 season, the Vipers were one of only four IHL teams affiliated with NHL squads. That season saw the Vipers finish dead last in the league in standings and attendance. The impending demise of the IHL combined with the plumbing attendance led Palace Sports to find a new affiliate for the Lightning. On June 4, 2001, both the IHL and the Vipers ceased operations. Now, because the Vipers were owned by Bill Davidson, a Detroit businessman with an estimated worth at the time of $3.5 billion, he held uh, numerous holdings under the balance, uh, banner of Palace Sports Entertainment. Davidson's holdings included the Pistons, the Detroit Neon, the DTE Energy Music Theater, and the Palace of Auburn Hills, where the Pistons and Vipers played. Now, Davidson would later add or purchase the Detroit Fury, Detroit Shaw, Shock, and of course, the Lightning. The CEO, CEO of Palace Sports Entertainment, Tom Wilson, oversaw the daily operations of the Vipers. Now, the Vipers were aggressive in marketing and player acquisitions. The team acquired minor league free agents with prior success in the AHL or IHL, including Peter Savaglia, Stan Drulia, uh, Lonnie Loach, and Daniel Shank. The Vipers all, also made hockey headlines by st- signing star NHL players in the midst of contract holdouts, such as Peter Bondra and Mich- uh, Michael Pavanka of the Capitals in 96 and Brian Smoliski of the Pittsburgh Penguins in 97. Now, the Vipers also served as a launching site for young Eastern European players looking to adjust the NHL-style game, which involved a slightly smaller rink and more aggressive play. These players included uh, Peter Sikora, Stan Nekar, Miroslav Shatan, Satan, Christoph Oliwa, and Sergei Samsonov. Samsonov, in particular, was a popular player who made his Vipers debut in 1996 at the age of 17 and was widely regarded as a phenom. He was drafted off the Vipers by the Bruins following the season as the 8th pick of the first round in a 97 entry draft. He would win a Calder that year as the NHL's best rookie in 98. Now veteran NHL players concluded their playing career with the Vipers including Dan Quinn, Gerald Gallant, Brad Shaw, Brent Fennick, Jimmy Carson, Michel Petit and Sean Burr. Now the Vipers also made uh, headlines in 98 by signing Hockey Hall of Famer Gordie Howe to a one day contract. Howe was 69 at the time, suited up for the Vipers and again played one shift. The publicity stunt was intended to drum up interest in the club, as well as afford Howe the opportunity to play a pro hockey game in six consecutive decades. Now, Davidson, of course, bought Tampa Bay in 299, and the Vipers were named as affiliate and served as such until the league ceased operations in uh, 2001. Now, uh, other key players... Maybe I haven't mentioned yet. Let's go over them again. Don't leave anybody out. Phil Bork was there for a little while. Dan Cluche, uh, Ian Herbers, Joanne Hedberg, uh, Dan Kessa, Sammy Salo, uh, and Tim Thomas and Kevin Weeks. Now, again, affiliate of Ottawa, 97-98, and with Tampa Bay, 99-2001. But for its time, it was one of the most important independent franchises in pro hockey history because... Uh, It helped support Tampa Bay uh, from an affiliate standpoint, 
helped continue to support the expansion of hockey in Detroit of the modern era. Now, the only problem I had with this, you couldn't see any Viper games on Canadian TV. You would think that TSN and the other networks would pick up some because the quality of play was uh, was quite strong, especially when Peter Bonder arrived and when Satan arrived as well. So, But ladies and gentlemen, the, the big controversy, of course, with Samsonov playing as an underage player only 17. I don't know what the regulations were with the IHL, but just like the uh, WHA, underage players could play. I think you were allowed one or two per uh, per team. And, of course, these were independents. But if anybody in the Detroit area can tell me how many free tickets were involved, I think it was either buy one or get one free or buy uh, buy one, get two free. But, you know, uh, years ago, Toronto Blue Jays, it was $2 two dollars for uh, for general admission, uh, but you get them free if you bought so much at Dominion. So it was probably something similar. So let me know if you know how these free tickets went about. So ladies and gentlemen, on this very sad day with the passing of Guy Lafleur, let us know how you're doing. Give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget, the requests are always considered and always, always, always appreciated. Thanks for listening. Bye.